Hi, this is Glenn Gay from G Squared Interactive. Welcome to the second episode of SEO from the Frontlines. Um, today I'm going to be covering a blog post that I published on Search Engine Roundtable this morning. Um, and I called it the maddening adventure of tracking AI overviews in Google Search Console. So with Google I.O., Google launched AI overviews in the search results in the United States. They also announced that that data would be part of Google Search Console and in it um, just not broken out. So it's kind of the way that they handle featured snippets. Uh, the data is mixed in, but they're not breaking it out via filter or a, a separate report. Um, so it. SGE actually launched in May of 2023, so um, over a year ago, and I had early access and I've been analyzing that data as much as I could. But with the announcement at I.O., uh, that data being in Search Console uh, was really cool and more people would be uh, accessing AI overviews, so there technically should be more data there. So what I did was I set up... Um, uh, multiple projects at ZipTie. So ZipTie is a really cool tool for tracking AI overviews, where you rank in the search results, if you have the featured snippet, tracking that over time. Um, so I set up a, you know, a bunch of sites with a bunch of queries per site, and I started really digging in. Um, so you know, what I quickly started to realize is for some AI overviews, um, the site was ranking maybe the bottom, middle to bottom of page one in the 10 blue links, but in the AI overview. And just so you know, from a Google Search Console perspective, for tracking average position, uh, AI overview should technically be number one because that's the block that sits at the top of the search results. That's where a featured snippet would be. That should be number one. So I should have been able to um, clearly see the difference there in position, probably click through rate, uh, probably clicks uh, for uh, you know, queries that were ranking where the site was ranking, you know, bottom of page one versus in the AI overview. So my post covers uh, a bunch of different things, including that data, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, just, you know, first, I wanted to say that there are a few different challenges to tracking AI overviews. Uh, the first being is that it's United States only. Um, and it's also just for logged in users. So if it's uh, if you're searching incognito, that data, you're not going to see the AI overview. So that's kind of weird and that limits the data as well. Um, third, they're very dynamic. So I'm seeing you know, different results sometimes when I'm logged into an account that has SGE active in labs versus just in the US and seeing AI overviews. Sometimes the AI overview doesn't show up in one versus another. Sometimes the link cards are different. Sometimes the link cards change really quickly. So um, anyway, there's, there's definitely challenges on that, on that front. Um, the other thing I kind of covered was uh, before the Ray update named after Lily Ray, where she was doing a great job at surfacing all sorts of crazy stuff that uh, Google was surfacing in AI overviews. Uh, we both actually started analyzing your money, your life queries, and we both shared about one that was very similar. And in the link cards were park domains, no favicons, park domains. I mean, it was just crazy that for your money, your life query um, with health and medical that that would be surfacing. Um, after the Ray update, when Google made changes, um, you could see the most authoritative health and medical sites started ranking in the link cards. And that's across a lot of different queries, not just the one that I was looking at. So it's just an example of how dynamic and quick things can change there. So back to tracking. So again, via zip tie and Google Search Console, I was like, I'm going to surface this uh, data and really start to see differences there. Or at least I was hoping. Nope, it wasn't clear at all. Um, I'll take you through two different examples here that I published in the post. Uh, the first one was a query that ZipTie had ranking at number seven, Search Console had ranking at nine, um, but it was ranking in the AI overview, checking the data, average position pretty much didn't move that much. I mean, you can see a little spike at the end, but it's still not even breaking uh, you know, the top five there. Um, Click-through rate data was completely flat. Uh, clicks data was totally flat. Um, so it was very, very hard to surface and glean any insights from this at all. The second example was ZipTie finding in the 10 blue links that this site ranked, uh, this is a different site, ranked number five, um, but it was in the AI overview. So uh, checking Search Console, it also shows number five. That was good to see consistency there. But look, you could see it actually drops in rank recently, which is, doesn't make any sense at all. Um, and then the click-through rate, again, flat clicks again flat so basically 
um, I came to the uh, realization that this is going to be really, really hard to track. And it, I don't think you could really glean any insights from this at all. And I also explained that maybe that's exactly what Google wants. Maybe they just don't want people to be able to see this data right now. Um, you know, there's a lot of, they're catching a lot of flack about the potential impact to traffic and advertising revenue and everything else. So um, it's, it's mixed in and very hard to break out. It's also worth noting that Bing is doing the same thing. So uh, Bing chat data, which is now Copilot, is part of Bing Webmaster Tools, but mixed in as well. You can't break it out. So, and I'm sure Bing has several other reasons for not showing that as well, like very low usage. Um, but who knows, because they're not letting us see that. So uh, it's also important to understand that, you know, it, it would be great to actually have like a filter or a separate report in Search Console. Um, but Barry Schwartz interviewed uh, Elizabeth Tucker at SMX last week, and she said she didn't even have a separate filter or report for AI overview data. So um, that tells you a lot given her position at Google. So that doesn't bode well for site owners trying to get something. Um, but what I did was I ended my post with just two mock-ups of, you know, in case Googlers are watching, um, of two different ways that this can work. Like in the search appearance tab, you can have an AI overview search appearance um, filter where you can click that and filter everything. Or you could actually have a separate report like Discover in Google News where you could see that it says AI overviews. You click that, you get a whole separate report. That would be amazing. And you could see the queries and the click-through rate and clicks and traffic and so on and so forth. Um, so that's kind of where we are. So, you know, I'll post more about what I'm seeing tracking wise, because I am tracking a number of queries across a number of domains. Um, but I really think unless they break something out, that it's going to be very, very hard to to track. So until the next episode, I would say try and track this on your own. You could use zip tie. You can, you know, dig into search console again, filter by United States only. See if you can find anything. I really couldn't across domains and across queries. So, um, you know, I'm just hoping that we can get some sort of reporting or filter in, in Search Console. So until then, good luck.